so much for being here with me today on True Crime Edition. If you love true crimes and unsolved cases, then you're at the right channel. Before we get started in this case, I want to extend out our heartfelt prayers to the loved ones and friends of Marina Wright. Today's case is going to be taking us to the Philippines. It's just north of the equator. There is about around 7,641 islands that many can go on and enjoy the beaches. It does have many fruit there as well. There was a family that lived there, and on May 20th, 1988, there was a beautiful daughter born, who they named Marina. She was born in Bulacan, in the Philippines. Now, it's known for being the most ancient areas around. It's very relaxing and laid back. Now, Marina's mother, Marisbeth, had moved when she was only a year old to Wellington, New Zealand. She had taken both her daughters with her. They had both grew up very happy and much loved. They were very close sisters and became best friends. The family would describe her as a practical joker. With a soft heart for lots of animals. As you can see, she was very beautiful and her sister said that she was a very caring person and she was a responsible best friend. She was also capable of making the best jokes around, she said. Marina was just 26 years old in 2014. She had gotten a job working at the Kiwi Bank in the credit card department. She loved to work even though she didn't get a lot of pay. It was better than other jobs that were around, but it did pay her bills. She had been saving her money to go on vacation to Australia. She wanted to go to her friend's wedding. She was getting married on the Gold Coast, and it's a city just located south of Brisbane. In July, that is when the date was. She was planning on having fun in the sun, it was on July 24th, 2014. She had boarded a plane to head out for an adventure of a lifetime. The Gold Coast is a place that has lots of sun. Most people have said it's paradise. And you take the sights and the sun with its large golden beaches to enjoy. It also has some inland canals that do weave into the big city. It also is known for its surfing, jet skis, water parks, has many beaches and bars to go to. It also has the theme parks. They have them there too. If you're just in the mood for relaxing near the beach and maybe sunbathe, you can do that also. Now the wedding had gone without a hitch. Everyone had fun, dancing, drinking, like most weddings. It was about a week later that the wedding was over and done with. However, Marina did want to stay for a while and she wanted to venture out to see Australia with her good friend, Savannah Lisa. They both had gone out to the beaches and many bars, just enjoying themselves around the city. Now, Marina was a beautiful girl, did not have a boyfriend, so 
to her, this was the great time to start using Tinder, to find someone there that might have something in common with her, or just have fun and go out for some drinks and talk. She was up for anything. Now in early August, she went on Tinder, and there she saw a man, and his name was Gable Tassi. She thought he was handsome, and he loved her profile as well. They had texts back and forth over the next several days, just talking at first. Then they started to flirt a little. And eventually, the conversations were getting mighty steamy. She did have an attraction to Gable. He was relatively good looking, and he knew just what to say to women. He was very charming, charismatic, with a great smile, they say. Now, Verena told her friend that he was good looking and that he looked like an actor from one of her TV shows. With that, she really liked him a lot, and he liked her too was on August 7th that they made arrangements to meet up that evening for some drinks and to see where the night leads them. Now, Gable had suggested to meet up just off Cannibal Avenue. This place is known for being the busy street. It's the heart of the Gold Coast tourist area. So they both had agreed to meet up there. It was about 8.45 p.m. You can see Marina just waiting for him. And then she sits down. Now they were seen on the street surveillance camera. For the first time, the meetup was just outside the surf shop. They did give a little hug. Then they headed off to Kenville Avenue. Then at 8.48, just three minutes later, they were entering in a surf's paradise tavern, beer and garden. Then just minutes later, they must have changed their minds and you can see them leaving. Then on the CCTV, it does show them walking by a bottle shop and they had bought a six pack of beer. You can also see them going into Gable's home. Now he had been living in an apartment at Avalon Riverfront apartment complex. It's right center of the middle of the city. It would appear from the outside was a very hard worker and a very respectable person, but on the inside is another thing. You see, beyond the tan skin, well kept up hair, you would think that the way he presented himself, it was great, but he does have a past. He is an Australian born and he was born in 1986. He had been raised by two loving parents who cared for him deeply while he was growing up. Many have said that he was an awkward throughout his childhood and teen years, and he was no stranger to the law and the police. He would have some run-ins with them at times. Now, in his teen years, he had started to develop a really bad problem with drinking. As with any drinking, being a teen, they do wind up getting into trouble with the law at times. You see, when he finally hit 18, this is when it went deeper than that. The police had found out that Gable was the mastermind of a forgery scheme. Gable and his two friends in this scam that he did bring over $30,000 between them all. The three had sold fake ID cards to underage kids so they can go into hotels during the school season. The police had found out that he also did counterfeiting notes and he went to court and he was just warned and was not convicted of anything. Then in 2011, he decided to drink and drive and was caught. He did have to pay a large fine and his driver's license was suspended for about 10 months without no prison time. Now he did have a job and he was laying down carpets in homes and apartments. Also, he did have an obsession, always recording himself with other women. He would have his phone in his pocket and he would leave it on to record. 
He did have motion detection cameras in his home due to many would steal from him and he wanted to get them if he could. Now, just two weeks before meeting Marina, he was spotted at three in the morning by the police. He had been seen in a Ford Falcon without license plates. He was driving about 100 miles per hour. He had owned this Ford Falcon and he was coming back from being at a Splendor in the Grass Music Festival in Barron Bay. He was going home to his apartment in Gold Coast. This is when he was spotted by the police for speeding. Now, instead of stopping and getting what was due to him for him speeding, he made a bad choice. He had wanted to outrun the police, with speeds reaching up to 130 miles per hour. The police had thrown spikes down on the road to get his tires, and they hit the mark. But this did not stop him. He kept going, just on his rims, trying to get away. Then, when the police had finally stopped him and took him in, they found out that he was four times over the legal limit to drive. He was released out on bail. Now he would go on with his life like nothing even happened. He had been banned from many venues for his outrageous behavior. Even the manager at Sin City had banned him for life. He had noticed him stalking women and it did creep them out. It was about 8.58 p.m. after they had bought the beer. The surveillance camera does show them arriving at Gable's apartment, walking up to the elevator. He did live on the 14th floor. His apartment was not really big, but it was very spacious with a beautiful view of the city lights at night. It was a one bedroom with a regularly nice sized living room in the balcony to sit and enjoy the scenery. Now, the night started off pretty well with him drinking and talking without Marina knowing it. Like he had done before, he secretly was recording their night. Now, as the night kept going, the beer had run out. And this is when Gable had brought out his homemade moonshine vodka to drink. Now, if you don't know about the moonshine vodka, it is really strong and you can really get drunk and plastered on it quickly, especially if you are a petite girl like Marina was, not knowing how your body's going to react to it. They had continued to drink, taking selfies out on the balcony, and then eventually later having sex. All was going okay until a little after they had sex. Then things turned for the worse. She had lost her phone. With Marina drinking the moonshine, it did affect her where she couldn't handle it and she got really drunk. Call them with what? I thought you lost your phone. Exactly. So how are you gonna call anyone without you your phone? You stole my fucking phone. I didn't touch your goddamn phone. You guys fucking stole my shit. Shit, I should so never. So that's why I'm fucking calling you. I should have never given you so much to drink. I thought we were gonna have fun. Well, where's my shit? Where's your Where phone? Where is my shit? What's your phone number? Oh. Going hundred fucking psycho bitch! Fucking. I don't deserve this shit, alright? I'm a nice fucking guy. Oh, yeah. Nice fucking guy with all the money. Must be on the balcony. Oh, well, I have shitloads of money, guys. My fucking money. Stop. Just calm down, please. You, I'm not coming down because... You've had too much to drink, alright? I'm Just, not coming down because I've had so much to drink and I have shitloads of money in New Zealand. It's not funny. Because I'm a fucking rich in New Zealand. It's not fucking funny. And it's shitty because I fucking rule in New Zealand. And it fucking sucks because people... Fucking take advantage of me in New Zealand and it's shit! Cause I have fucking money! It's not fucking funny! Shit! Just you know? Calm down, please. Do you know how I freak out? Cause no one else has money! Do you even remember what you were doing to me like half an hour ago? It was freaking yeah. me out. You beat me up for no reason. Exactly! Why? Because you said. You thought it was funny or something. It's not. I told you. 
with her being drunk by the moonshine, the homemade vodka, at the point, she started to throw his Oriental rocks at Gable. Now, with her throwing the rocks, as time went on, Gable had gotten more upset with her and tried to subdue her. He had held her down. All right, I give up. What do you want? What do I have to do? Oh! 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 It's not about who you need. It's about who you give a shit now. Baby. Fuck. I thought you were only kidding, but you're not. You never poo. You poo. Go on. Right now. See, I thought you were kidding. And I've taken enough. This is fucking bullshit. Yeah, I'm gonna chuck you off my fucking balcony, you goddamn psycho little bitch. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, do you Muay Thai now? What? What? Got something to say? Say it. Yeah. Say it. Mm. What? Super <laughs> I'm the one who's injured. You don't have a goddamn scratch on you. Seriously, I do. Seriously, what? Seriously, what? Seriously, what? Then Gable had forced Marina out of his room, but not the front door. No, 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 no. He had locked her out on the balcony instead. Come on, get up. Get up. Fuck up. Get up. Get up. You don't understand, do you? You don't understand anything at all, do you? You don't understand. You don't understand, do you? You just don't understand. Let go. You think you can hit me? And I'll just like, fall down, like in the movies? Hmm? Let go of it. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. You can hear 
her screaming, how scared she was being locked out on that balcony. You can clearly see that she was drunk and that she climbed out on Gable's balcony over the railing trying to get out of his apartment to go home and she slipped and fell 14 floors and immediately was killed on impact. Who the fuck do you think you are? No! Hmm? No! 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 You're trying to kill me, huh? No! Why no! are you trying to hit me with that? No! Huh? No! 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 Now Gabriel's phone was still recording in his pocket and this is when he had realized that she had gone over his balcony and fell. Now instead of calling the police like he should have, he instead called his lawyer. It was early in the morning and of course there was no answer. It was at 2.26 in the morning. It was just five minutes after Marina went over the balcony and was killed. You can see Gable leaving the elevator, reaching the ground floor. Then he had noticed the emergency personnel and the police outside the front of his building. He then goes and leaves the underground parking lot. All along his phone was still recording everything. Then you can see him start walking on the Gold Coast Main Strip. He then gets some pizza, sits down, and starts to eat it. After that, eating the pizza, he then calls his dad to tell him what had happened and ask him to come pick him up. Hello, is that? Um, I might have a bit of a situation. You see, um... I met up with a girl <clears throat> for a date tonight and um, she started getting really aggressive. Like it was alright at first and like <clears throat> we, you know, had sex in bed and then after that like she kept drinking and we were both drinking and she like, I, I think she thought it was like a joke or something but she kept like beating me up and whatever. Yeah, and um, it was because she was really drunk. And um, like I, I forced her out on the balcony and I, I think she might have jumped off. Like, I, 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 I've been walking around in there, like a million cops around my building. I'm, I'm I, I don't know what to do. I, don't, I didn't cause this, like I I didn't push her or anything. I like, I just, no, no, um, I'm, I'm like just walking around the area and there's like a million cops around the area. This is really f***ed up. I'm, I'm like um, next to uh, Domino's. So like, um, I, I didn't, this isn't my fault. I didn't do this. I, 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 I was um, giving her my alcohol, but she, she was really violent and um, I don't know, um, I like tackled her on, on my floor in, inside the building and then but I, I, I never forced her over the balcony. God no, I, I never do anything like that. I, it's really f***ed up. I, I don't know what to do. Like I'm, I'm just, um, I'm walking around the area and I, I just see merely cops around Avalon. So this is really, really f***ed up. What does this keep happening to me? Like, I, I, 
I can I like walk past the building a few times and there's a million cops out there. I don't know what the f happened. It's crazy. It's fucked up. It's so fucked up. I, I swear to God, I, I didn't push her or anything. I, I just chucked her out on the balcony and shut the door because she was beating me up. All right. This is when the local media started to report of Rainey's death and the investigation into how she fell, where she fell from also. The pathologist could not even tell how tall she was because of the trauma to her body that it sustained. They did do a blood test and learned that she was three times over the legal limit of the alcohol in her system. Had arrived at the police station with his lawyer and it was in the afternoon. As he went there, he did pleaded the fifth to remain silent. But he did agree to do some forensic testing. It was within days of Rena was finally identified and her family had been notified. The police had seized Gable's recording of that night with Rena. It was one week after Rena's death that Gable was officially charged for the murder of Rena. Now many inmates subjected violence toward Gable while he was in prison. He did not stay long in prison, however. It was only about three months later. He had been granted bail of $200,000. He had been banned from drinking any alcohol, tender, social media, and he could not leave his parents' house after 6 p.m. It was a curfew. He still went on with his life like nothing really happened. He was playing golf. He had played golf over the next several months. Here is a picture of him posing just days before his trial was set. In October 2016, when his trial began, the prosecutors had argued that Gable had left Arena in such a state of fear that she had no other option but to climb over the balcony's railing after she was locked out of his house. But the defense lawyers had said that Gable did use reasonable force toward Marina, who became erratic after several hours of drinking. They had played the recording during this time, and she did fall from the balcony, and Gable was nowhere on the balcony at that time. There was recording of his previous threats about her falling off, and that she is lucky that she hadn't been thrown off the balcony already. His trial had taken only six days. They did find him not guilty of murder and not guilty of manslaughter either. The conclusion at the trial is that Marina fell from her own free will and that Gable had nothing to do with it and no influence to those actions that night. He then was released as a free man. He did change his name, Derek Thomas, and he lashed out on social media to the feminists and that injustice that he had to go through and he was found innocent. He still had gotten interviews of what happened and got paid for those interviews, up to $250,000 an interview. With all his fame and what had happened to him and that he got all this money, the law of Australia had found him innocent. But however, in some eyes, he is not. Even though there was a lot of blaming toward Marina as well, she was never given a chance to defend herself or the actions that happened that night. It was only the recording, but he had gotten to defend himself. Now, when I listen to the recording, what I hear is a girl who drank too much, got upset and wanted to go home. On the recording, it was said that she had said no a total of 31 times in only 46 seconds. But instead, she was pushed out on the balcony. She found no other way but to climb out on the railing. And this is what the verdict had said. With the recording, I'll let you decide. What is this accident or was she pushed? The family and friends of Marina has always suffered in silence. They know nothing will bring her back. This once beautiful girl who had lots of dreams and passion for animals is now all they have is memories of her. She had so much to offer 
never thinking that her going to Australia to a wedding and having a time of her life, that her life would end out from a balcony. Well, this is the end of this case. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Until our next case, you guys take care and be safe. <laughs>